Somebody say, I refuse to allow my angel of blessings to depart in the name of Jesus. I paralyze all aggression addressed against my destiny in the name of Jesus. Let God arise in my favor, but in his anger and fight for me in the name of Jesus. One more. I neutralize all problems originating from the mistakes of my parents or my mistakes in the name of Jesus. Shout amen. amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you know your word. We know your word is coming with power this morning. Let there be light. In Jesus' name, amen. This month is our month of harvest. Slap your neighbor a high five. Say it's harvest time. So all the good things you have sown is time for harvest. Well, you know we have sown some bad things as well, right? So we need to plead for mercy. Because harvest means harvest. So you now need to be a wise child of God and say, Father, the bad seeds I've sown, show me mercy. Let the blood of Jesus wipe them away. But the good ones, Father, it's harvest time. Shout a believing amen. amen. Please note that Christianity is about a personal love relationship with Jesus. It's not about coming to church. It's not about hanging out with people that you think, oh, if I go there, I'll see some people that like me. Christianity is about having a personal relationship with Jesus. And it's about a journey through life with Jesus. Shout amen. amen. So the topic today is what? If you have the outline, what's it? Shout it out loud. The power of sacrifice. What are the synonyms of sacrifice? What does sacrifice mean to you? Anyone? Anybody? Somebody? Tupuna? God bless you. When you lose something to get something. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever, the multitudes, the millions, the billions. We have, I think, about a billion Catholics. Whoever believes in him from one son. Somebody say sacrifice. Sacrifice. What have you given? What have you denied yourself of to deserve a harvest? I'm a very practical Christian. If you know me and know me well, I'm black and white. I don't try to mince word to get to where I'm going. No, I say it the way it is. So when they tell me it's harvest time, I do a personal reflection. Hey, look, I don't want to harvest bad things, the bad things I've sown. So I'm not going to pretend like I'm all holy, like, oh, it's all good things coming. My parents, my grandparents, my ancestors, they've sown some bad things. So they may want to come after me. So I cannot be oblivious to the fact that some people or myself could be a potential candidate for negative harvest. But I say no in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the mercy of God. Do you deserve a harvest? So they give us all these words and we're all joyful, joyful, harvest, harvest. But what have you given? What have you done? What have you sown to really deserve a harvest? Synonyms of harvest. Sacrifice. Number one, surrender. Somebody say surrender. surrender. No, Jesus surrendered. You see, I've traveled a bit, and there are times they put me in some places, a few times, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm going to go get a hotel for myself because this doesn't meet my standard. Jesus left heaven, beautiful heaven, 
holy heaven where he had millions and millions, if not billions of angels serving him. He came as a baby, born in a manger, a place that was smelly. How many of us can sleep in a manger? Somebody say sacrifice. So that he can have you and have you and have you and have all of us. Remember the first Friday of this month I was sharing on the laws of harvest. And I talked about planting. Someone say planting. Your planting is your sacrifice. Synonyms of sacrifice. Surrender. It also means loss. Someone say loss. God's only son died. They killed him. Amen. And God didn't say no, no, no. I'm going to protect my son from untimely death. God didn't say that. Someone say sacrifice. He bore the shame, even though he was God. He did it all so that he can have a harvest of sons. Number three synonym is renunciation. Somebody say renunciation. If I see you sleeping, I'm going to call your name. Amen. So wake up. So anytime I see anybody sleeping, I'll say that. So that they can wake up. I won't call you out. But I'll, if I see you about three times, I'll call you out. Amen, somebody. The reason is because I want you to catch something. It's not because I want to name and shame. Because I want you to catch something. God wants us to offer ourselves wholeheartedly. Living for him every part of our being. Jesus. He offered himself for us. If you have done some things for your friends or your family, you would naturally expect them to do something, if not exactly the same, a fraction. Am I right? So let's do personal reflections. Have I really done what I'm capable of doing for this Jesus? It's a question for you. The God that protects you when you sleep, if you were to hire a security, wouldn't you pay them? If you were to hire a doctor to monitor your health 247 and check your BP, make sure the blood sugar is right, your heart rate, everything, wouldn't you pay them something? So when we talk sacrifice, why do we argue and think no? Jesus said, if any man will follow me, let him deny himself. Let him take his cross and follow that's the Bible. It is only us Christians that try to change what is in the Bible. Go on, ask the Hindu people the way it's been, that's how it's been. Ask the Muslims the way it's been, that's how it is. Ask those people serving so many other gods, they never try to amend the terms of their sacrifices. But we believers, we have the truth, but we try to lower the standard. Hence, making ourselves powerless. The place and the path to, sacrifice, to power is sacrifice. Amen. Can I ask you, how much have you sacrificed for your education? Can you think? The sleepless nights? Did you feel like studying that night? But you got up because you have an exam. But if it were for you, the Holy Ghost nudging you to wake up and pray. You go, no, tomorrow will be fine. And then many times the tomorrow never comes. Maybe the Holy Ghost nudges you. That brother is calling you. He needs some help. He's calling you, drawing you into service to Jesus. We come to church whenever we like, however we like. But how many times have you been to work late? Amen, somebody. Can I have a witness? Because we know they're going to pay us. They hold our paycheck. But because this God is so merciful. And he's very merciful indeed. Amen. But his mercies endures up to a certain time. Sometimes it terminates. Amen. Especially if he's been calling you into service. Calling you to a particular space. 
Thank you, Jesus. Why should we offer sacrifice? Before I get into that, the law of sacrifice says, thank you to Puna for that definition. It says you cannot get something you want without giving up something in return. But we just want to come and pray and think you will fall from heaven. So I say no. No. Jesus said it. Your Savior, my Savior. If any man will follow me, let him deny himself. Denial means let him discipline himself. So I ask you, I ask myself, what's your level of discipline and denial when it comes to this Jesus? Let him take up his cross. What cross are you bearing? Am I bearing for this Jesus to have a harvest? What cross are you bearing, Lika? To put on, where's your cross? Profego, where's your cross? Nalu, where's your cross? What cross are we bearing to have that sacrifice, that harvest? That he's promised. There are so many promises in the world. But they all come with a condition of denial, discipline, sacrifice. Sister Esther was saying this morning morning that it pains her heart when she hears people talking about, oh, don't give and give and don't give and give. It's for your give. If you don't give, keep your money. It's for your good. Stay on your level. But sacrifice. You want more? You go deeper. You want to be an A student? You study more and study more and stay there overnight. You want to be a B student? Just relax a little bit. And then you want to go down more? Relax a little bit more. Relax some more? Go to D. And then relax some more? F. Where are you? Where am I? God is a just God. Everything is possible. Somebody say everything is possible. Every, impossible is nothing. You never bring things to me and I say it's not possible. No. I never see impossibility. Luke 137. With man, it is impossible. But not with God. For with God, all things are. Are we here or we've gone? Why should we sacrifice? 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. Why should we sacrifice? 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. You see that story we read in our Bible reading talks about David. I'll tell you the story from the beginning. He said he was going to count the people of Israel and then the prophet of God said, don't count. He was like, no. He was, he was like, oh, why do you want to count? Anyway, he counted. They came back and they said they're about 800,000 or something and God got angry. I was like, why did you count the people? I'm going to discipline you. I'm going to deal with you. And God gave him three conditions. Either this or this or this. Choose one. And then at some point, he got to a place. He said, I'm going to sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. And then somebody came. You see? <laughs> Let's say, for example, you want to give your tithe of something. I don't know. You want to give a thousand. And then the person says, no, don't worry. Or they want to buy chairs in church. Well, no, don't, don't worry. I'll do it. Don't let people do that to you. Amen. You know what David said? He said, no. I will not offer to the Lord what will not cost me. So your service to Jesus, what is it costing you? If it is not costing you something, your harvest is not near. So it's harvest time. But this is the truth. What is your service costing you? Jesus is the cost that God had to pay to get all of us. If you were to start a business, you need a capital, right? Ah, if you were to buy this phone, the price is the cost. Am I right? So for you to get a harvest, you must pay a price. What price have you paid? Or what price are you paying? Or what price are you willing to pay? pay? How far do you want to go with this God? All things are possible. I'm not saying by crook or hook, no. I mean clean, with peace of mind. 
And I'm not just talking wealth. I'm not just talking material things. I'm talking all things pertaining to life and godliness. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says God has given us all things richly in Christ. He said, how is he that gave us all things? How is he that gave us his only son? Why won't he also richly give us all things? If we could part with his son, the highest level of sacrifice, human sacrifice. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. Let's read this. Why should we offer sacrifices? Number one, let's, let's read together after two. One, two, go. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are pe- being saved and those. He says that you, you are sweet. You are supposed to be yourself and myself. A sweet smell to God. In those days when they offer bond sacrifices, if, it, if the smoke ascends up, that means it's accepted. If it goes down, it's not accepted. Sweet smell. Are you smelling good to God? Am I smelling good to God? Number two, why should we? Because we're supposed to be smelling good. Are you a perfume that is sweet to God? Are you a $2 perfume? Or a $5 one? Are you Chanel? Or which one? Pra- Gubana, whatever it is called. Whatever pastor calls it. What else do we have? Those high range perfs. Is that your level? Or are you the $2 one? It's a reflection for me and for you. 1 Corinthians 3.13. Why should we sacrifice? Because every work will be tested with fire. Let's read together. Let's read together. Are you here or you are sleeping? I can see some eyes closing. If you are sleeping, just stand up to help yourself. Amen. Let's read together. One, two, go. Their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Do you hear? Your work in Christ, my work will be tested with fire. Not literal fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. If it burns, that means it's not of good quality. If it goes through and comes out, the ones that go through and come out are the ones that cost people. For example, this place, some people have sweated blood. Some people have given sacrificially. I'm not cajoling you to give. This is not about bringing your money. If you like, bring. It's for you. If you like, don't that's That's okay. God will always provide. Even this place, you know who gave us money to make it? The landlords, they don't come to this church. They said, make this place beautiful enough for a church. So if you don't give, God will raise stones. And they didn't give 5,000. They give about 50 or so thousand to fix this place. To be a church. Somebody shout glory. So we are not saying this so that you can say, oh, church, church, church. No, the God we serve is much more than how you and I think. Our small brains cannot fathom the almighty God. So when we call you to the altar of sacrifice, it's for you and for you. And for your children. And for your children's children. If you deny the sacrifice, you deny the future generations of good things. There are times God will want to destroy. And he will say, I remember my servant David. So what's your cost? What's your sacrifice? What's your legacy? Are you eating it all? Somebody once said, if it will never be enough for you, give it a sacrifice. Amen. Ah, this God is good. There are some things we can't share because they will say 
you are talking too much. But again, I'm not talking material things. I'm talking even encounters with God. When God saw that Solomon was going to give or he gave a thousand lambs or cows as sacrifice, God appeared to him and gave him a word. He said, what do you want? You know God gets to that level? When you sacrifice your level, he said, come, what exactly do you want? I remember there was a time I was fasting for so long. Then I saw a personality said, are you still fasting? Sacrifice. Someone say sacrifice. What's your cost? If it's not costing you anything, you can't, it's, it's, not, too, it's not quality. It will go through fire and it will burn. Examples of sacrifice in the Bible. I'll finish. Give me some 15 minutes, please. Number one, there was a woman with the alabaster box. Matthew chapter 26, verse 6 to 13. This woman brought the box and broke it and poured it on Jesus. And you know what some people said? Some people like you and I, they were like, oh, it's too expensive. Why are you giving all this to God? Amen. Amen. Why are you pouring this on Jesus? It's a waste. Let's give it to the poor. That's what some people say when it comes to tithe and offering. They'll say, I would rather give my money to the poor. Jesus said, you will always have the poor. But there's a difference between giving to me and giving to the poor. That's what Jesus said. Someone say sacrifice. Say everything has its place. Say that everything has it. Come on, say it. Everything has its place. If you take your tithe... And give to the poor, that's good. And I'm not asking you to do it by force. But that's your level. Amen. If your offering is $2 and $1 and $3, but you pay tax. They take your tax before even your pay comes into your account. You are loyal to pay your tax that they used to fix your, your roads and your hospitals. Where is your own tax for the Lord? Your sacrifice. Where is it? Where's your altar? Is your sacrifice speaking for you? People don't know that the sacrifice speaks. Amen? The Bible says, may the Lord remember you in the day of trouble. May he remember all your offerings and sacrifices. When they bring the book before God, according to Malachi, will he see $1.50? Because if you were to go to IRD, he would see your, they would see your taxes of 400 or 300 or 700 per week. But your God, your Jesus, that keeps you day and night, you put 50 cents and $1 and $2, people of God. And he's the one keeping you day and night, right? Even the taxes you are paying for your hospitals, it can't fix your health. Because God is still the one that will decide if the health will be restored. Even the roads you are riding on, you are driving on, you think it's safe. He's still the one sending his angels to protect you from harm and danger. That God you can walk away and leave a dollar on his altar. I'm not here to pull you down, but these are facts. Is your offering speaking for you? What is your offering saying? Is he saying blood? Giving out of have you given before and you are crying? Have you given before and you are weeping? I remember many years ago, some years ago, when one of us came here newly, she said God told her to give. And she emptied her account. And she gave to this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. When we saw the money in the account, I was like, sister, please, oh, come and take your money. Because I knew how she came. I knew she didn't have money. So I was like, ah, please don't come and put us in trouble. Come and take your, come and take your, she didn't. So I'm saying this to you that we're not really after your money, but that person was wise. Today she's changed. It's a different story. I'm not surprised because it was on the altar of sacrifice. Praise God. Don't sleep. Oh. I'll call your name now. No, I won't call your name. Amen. Have you given before and you're shedding tears? Have you given before and you're hugging the thing like this before they take you and you're like, ah, oh my God. I'm telling you, serious. 
And you know what happens? If you can't, oh my goodness. Not long ago, the Lord helped me to understand that the higher you fly, the higher you go in him, the lesser material things look to you. Then you are able to part with them. I was flying in the air. And then things started getting small. I love flying. Because God speaks to me a lot whenever I'm flying. So he began to let me understand that this is how it is in the kingdom. When you are higher in me. You know, as we are here, you are big. This house, this place is massive. But the higher you fly in the air, these things look like dust. Eventually you don't even see them. That's how it is. The higher you go, when you cross $10, when you cross coming early, he gives you another one. He strengthens your muscle. You go deeper. Somebody say, go deeper. Somebody shout, go deeper. You must go deeper. That woman offered sacrifice. I'll quickly read verse 6. Thank you. Verse 6. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of a very expensive perfume. So don't give God what is not expensive. Don't give God. You can give at your level. If $10 is good for you, then please. If coming early is good for you, give. If sweeping is your own, give it. If time is your own, give it. If energy is your own, give it. If singing is your own, give it. But it must cost you something. A very expensive perfume. Which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. And the, when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? Have you seen the concert of Beyonce before? Or Adele? Have you? Do you see imperfections? If we were to do that for Jesus, some people would say, why this waste? If you want to have Beyonce in this place, she's going to sing rubbish that will not feed your spirit, that will not change your life. But if we were to have an anointed man of God, we would say, why give them so much? This perfume could have been sold at a high price, verse 9, and the money given to the poor. Listen to what Jesus said. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? What's your business? Live your life, let her be. Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. I'm talking harvest. Listen. Jesus said, the poor you will always have with you. But you will not always have me. The church will not always be at this level. So if Jesus needs you now, and you're like, oh, I don't want to be there. Oh, that's okay. That's all good. But you had the opportunity. And I always like speaking the truth because one man of God said, when you speak the truth to people now, you never know if you will see them again. So I don't want blood on my hands. I don't want God asking me, but I sent you to that brother, that sister. You didn't tell them. The poor you will always have, but you will not always have me. Look at this. Verse 12, when she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, look at the harvest. Wherever. Just for a bottle of perfume. Look at what she got. Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world. She didn't need advertisement. She didn't need Facebook ad. No marketing. Jesus said, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Eternal memorial. What's your cost? You want harvest? You want popularity, fame? You want your business to grow? What's your costs? What's your seed? What's the quality of your seed? Is somebody listening to something? Are you getting something? I don't want you to just hear and go away. I want you to listen. 
let it sink. I'm a very practical person. Think about what can I do from this? How can I improve the quality of my life? How can I improve the quality of my children that are coming on the way? Some of you, God has a very short, he's prepared somebody for the unmarried. I just had that now, my spirit. For those that are unmarried, God has prepared somebody special for you. But your sacrifice is where we get it for you. Your sacrifice. Your sacrifice. Your sacrifice. Wake up. Your sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. So think, what's my sacrifice? G- Peter said, we have left all and followed you. But look at what Jesus said. This is the last one. Jesus said, anybody that has left, if you can find that for me, media, Anyone that has left, whether father or mother or brother or houses in this world, they will get a hundredfold return. Shout hallelujah. Even if you put your money in fixed deposit, the highest interest rate now, I think, is about 6% or so. Very small. So if you have like a thousand per year, not per month, though. So if you have a thousand, they will give you, is this six, sixty dollars for one whole year? Jesus said, a hundredfold. I can prove it to you. My life is a testimony. Our lives are testimonies of this God's goodness. That's where we share. So that you can see it's possible. Mark 10. Thank you, media. Let's read together. No, no, go to 20, 29. Let's read together. After two, one, two, go. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, let's be on our feet to read together. This is the one, you must take the words of Jesus seriously. Amen? Take him serious. Jesus says what he means, and he means what he says. Can we say that together? Jesus says what he means, and he means what he says. It's not like you and I that we promise and we don't, we just talk for talking. No, no, no. He says what he means. Let's read together after two. One, two, go. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, verse 30, Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses. Wait. I'm going to hundred houses. I will make sure I personally build a house for Jesus. Even if it's in Nigeria. Because it's cheaper there. You must be smart Christians. Amen. Jesus cannot lie. You want good retirement plan? We were on a training this week. Forget Kiwi Sebao. He can't feed you when you are old. You want good retirement plan? This is it. This is it. I was discussing with the guy and he said, how much do you have at the moment? And I said, okay, a couple of millions, da, da, da. Well, not cash. Don't think I have cash. Don't come ask me for money. Uh, I, you know, in asset, we're talking. We're talking about retirement plan. It's not enough, my brothers and sisters. This is the real retirement plan. People will be bringing stuff for you. You know, I write this, this house to you. Sister Esther, go and build a church in somewhere if you can afford it. 100 houses for you, your children, your children's children. It will come. Amen. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses and brothers. Maybe people persecute you. They throw you out because you believe in Jesus. Let them go. God will give you people that love you even more than your blood brothers and sisters. And mothers. And children. And lands. He said land flowing with milk and honey. The land that is not hard. The land that will not consume you. That's what it will give you. With persecutions. 
Now, when you become rich, people will fight you. They will say you are bragging. They say you are treading down on them. Somebody says it's the Lord's doing. Yes. Who is the richest now? Okay, let's not even talk about This is my brother, Elon Musk. Doesn't he flaunt his wealth? Can you imagine if one of us had something like that? And just broadcast Jesus every day, every time. People will want to know. This guy, Colgate guy, what's his name? Anime, help me. There's this oil mogul from the U.S. many, many years ago. I've forgotten his name. He got to a point he was giving 90% of his income. God will never lie. There was a time God said we should give our car. Brand new. I said me, give. Brand new. I've not even used the car for one year. When you are giving something, you are like this. <laughs> Have you been to that place before? It's not a $5,000 car. Someone say sacrifice. When we came newly, we, had, we didn't even know our future. We came with about $15,000. They needed something in the house, in the church, the headquarters. My husband said, let's give. I can't remember how much we gave. Everything shifted. You can't secure your future with what you have. This is the real insurance. Someone say sacrifice. I'll tell this story. One woman, they told her, oh, she was giving, giving, giving. I can't remember clearly. But in the end, they told her, I think by word of prophecy, that all that you have given is what has changed away cancer. The cancer didn't touch her. Where is your sacrifice? Is he speaking? What is it saying? Is it blood sacrifice? Is he bringing out tears and denial? I remember we gave something recently and I was crying. I was shedding tears. I was like this. Some of the things were even giving. Even now I'm still feeling like crying. Some of the things I was even I wanted to take part of it. In short, not that I wanted, I took part of it. And then one of our boys said, Mommy, remember Saul in the Bible. God said, leave everything. He took some. So immediately I heard that. I just gave everything. I said, I, I, I surrender. Somebody said, sacrifice. Even me, I'm struggling. So don't think I'm all perfect. Somebody said, sacrifice. Ah, let's pray. Make a commitment. I have decided... To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turn. All to Jesus, I surrender all to Him, I freely give, I, I will ever love and trust Him in His Presence daily live. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender all to Jesus, all to Thee, my. Blessed Savior, I acabo se ki aru se keti kaba. Sing it one more time. I surrender. I surrender. All to Jesus. I surrender. Oh. To Jesus, all oh, to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Pray 
one prayer. Father, walk on my heart so that I can increase my level of sacrifice. Give me grace. Is somebody praying? When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere working for my Lord. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere. Working for my Lord. Hey, give off your best to the master. Give off the strength of your youth. Clad in salvation's full armor. Oh, we give off our best, Father. Oh, we walk in your truth, Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, when you call, we will answer. Walk on our hearts, Father. Walk on our hearts, Father. Beliando kule bruska handi ya bruski putu kapati ke pusi bala e bruski puzu brinzi kahale bruske boshu kaba. Let our sacrifices be smooth, sweet smelling sacrifice, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pardon me, please pray this. The highest form of sacrifice you can give is yourself. Romans 12, 1. It says that we should give ourselves as living sacrifices. Somebody say, I'm a sacrifice. Yes, living sacrifices. Holy, acceptable. That means some sacrifices are not acceptable. I want to kneel down and beg some of us. See, your destiny is in Jesus. I can tell you a thousand times over. Your destiny is not anywhere else. You will only get frustrated. He's in Jesus. Please give everything to him. Give everything to him. Surrender your all before it's too late. Because you don't always have time, brothers. You don't always have time. Your salary is not enough anyway. Say, Father, I give myself. I give myself to you. Please teach me by your spirit how to offer myself as a living sacrifice that is acceptable to you, that is holy in your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, I hide my destiny in you. There's no future elsewhere. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Mighty God, we thank you. We receive grace, Lord. We can't do it by ourselves. Father, we receive, we release, we ask you to release grace upon your house, Father. It's like I see hearts opened. Lord, I pray for the hearts that are open, God. Grace. Grace for higher levels of sacrifice. Grace for greater levels of sacrifice. God, we receive in the name of Jesus. For those that are struggling, Father, help us. Help us in our struggles, God. Our flesh is weak, Jesus. Help us. Help us, oh God. Help us. Help us, God. Help us to grow in grace. In the name of Jesus. As we depart from here, no devil steals this word. In the name of Jesus. This word will grow. It will multiply and bring forth fruit. In the lives of the hearers, in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us just stretch our hand to mommy right now. Let us thank God for using her for us this morning. Let us pray that God will continue to anoint her. Let us pray that God will continue to increase her in the mighty name of Jesus. That God will continue to use her mightily, not just here but around the world as well in Jesus' name. That a light will continue to shine brighter and brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus Christ. That everything she lay her hands on shall prosper. That the anointing on her life will continue to grow and it will multiply in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Are we ready for our confessions this morning? In three, two, one, let's go. This is my September of supernatural supplies. My container of flour will not run out, and my bottle of oil will not become dry. My September of seed is finally here. No more clowning and slow movement. I am walking upon my high places. I am running and mounting up with wings as eagles. My September to remember is here. Unstoppable is my new name. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed week, family. Love you guys. Amen.